All right, so let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Beyond this morning, where the U.S. Taliban treaty promises to end a two-decade-long wait for peace. However, it of course comes at a time when political chaos is brewing inside the war-torn nation. Now, in this special broadcast, Vion will try and decode the U.S.-Taliban peace deal as we analyze the implications and also the hopes of ending violence in Afghanistan. Now, the sounds of bullets, bombs and sirens have gripped Afghanistan for several decades now. It's not just the United States. Earlier, there was this Soviet invasion as well, but the war that the United States declared on Afghanistan has been ongoing ever since the war on terror was announced by George W. Bush in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. Now, the new peace deal negotiated by the United States, however, has promised the elusive peace in this war-torn nation. Now, intra-Afghan negotiations will begin on the 10th of March, which is going to be very, very tricky, because remember, the Taliban's position so far on the internationally recognized Ashraf Ghani administration has been anything but favorable. They've rejected Ashraf Ghani's government as an American puppet with little control outside of the capital city of Kabul. The Taliban, for now, seems willing to move forward, but a lot can, of course, go wrong between NAV and, and the intra-Afghan negotiations. The Taliban ranks are obviously notoriously fractious, which implies that this reduction in hostilities that they have promised could actually escalate any time. And what's more, the talks between Kabul and the Taliban could very easily falter. There are also questions to even... There are also question marks over the Trump administration's desire to withdraw the 12,000-strong U.S. troop presence on Afghan soil within 14 months. And then there is, of course, the overriding question about the Afghan government's hope for peace in the country. But the burning question remains, what does the Taliban truly want out of this process? So as we try and decode this deal further, it is important to understand why it is so difficult to strike a deal. Now, the Taliban has, of course, remained the most formidable insurgency fighting unit that the United States and the Afghan government has faced. Now, certainly, it does not look like it's more than 60,000 fighters are going anywhere anytime soon. The Taliban is actually winning the war on the ground against the Americans and the Afghan military. The Taliban does not make too many concessions because it currently has the upper hand in the war on the ground in Afghanistan. So after having fought for 19 long years, the United States has finally realized that it simply cannot win this war. The real progress, of course, would happen only if the Taliban ultimately agrees to actually sit down with the Afghan government, which Abdul Ghani Baradar, the Taliban's point person for negotiations in Qatar, has promised to uphold. And now, ironing out the specifics of an Afghan government-Taliban deal would, of course, come next. But these, of course, are the specifics. Given the Taliban's position on Ashraf Ghani's government in Afghanistan, this could take several months or perhaps even years to materialize.